Max Verstappen, the current Formula One world champion, led his Red Bull team to scoring the best time on the first day of preseason testing in Bahrain. Some tried to take the top spot, but Verstappen was there to beat their times within minutes. Is this the start of another season of dominance? Let's dive into the details of some of the most interesting features of the Red Bull RB20. Red Bull's 2024 Formula One car has an unusual radiator intake and side pod undercut. At first, it looked like there was a second vertical radiator intake under the normal horizontal one, but this couldn't be confirmed from the photos of the car's launch. There was a lot of noise about this new direction, and many people started calling it a copy of Mercedes Zero side pod design, which is not at all what it is. Red Bull is one of the most secretive F1 teams, and it is doing everything it can to stay out of sight. However, on the first day of preseason, some clear pictures were taken of the team. We could finally see what the competitors are up against this season when the Red Bull RB20 hit the track in Bahrain this morning. It was showing off the real-world solutions that were chosen for F1 2024. The RB20 has a new side pod and cooling intake design. The Milton Keynes team chose to fully test some Mercedes ideas that had already failed. They also chose to split the cooling intake into three smaller ones to make it more efficient. Depending on the weather at different race weekends, they might close or open some of these slits. The RB20's cooling inlet is set up differently than the RB19's. It did this by using three different sources. The first is an opening in the shape of a shark overbite that is under the long tray in the upper section. There is a very small intake that is hidden under the long profile. This is done so that the flows that lap the bottom of the profile can cool the parts. As was already said during the car's presentation, the second cooling intake is vertical and is mounted on the side walls of the chassis. In addition, the last intake is behind the driver, close to the square-shaped halo. It's where the two gullies that push air toward the rear beam wing enter. This one shocked everyone on the grid because it's something we haven't seen since the rules were put in place. This group of inlets is smaller than the RB19 though, because the technical team led by Adrian Newey decided to make the airbox longer, making it bigger and rounder. These results show that they added more radiating masses to the top of the engine cover, which means it needs more cooling. In fact, Adrian Newey told Auto, Motor and Sport why Red Bull made so many changes to the RB20 over the RB19. We knew everyone would copy our car from last year. If we had only focused on further development, we would have been vulnerable. It is Red Bull's goal for the 2024 Formula One season to win a fourth straight Drivers' Championship title with the Dutchman and a third straight Constructors' Championship title. There are also a lot of rumours going into the new season. Christian Horner is being investigated for alleged inappropriate behaviour. Ferrari is said to be interested in either Adrian Newey or Pierre Wachet and Zach Brown wants Red Bull and RB to stop working together. The team would rather not be in the news as they get ready to defend their world titles. Verstappen, on the other hand, has said that it's just rivals trying to make Red Bull less stable. That is a constant tactic, one that is always used, that does not only apply to this story, but has always been the case and is typical Formula One. He says it straight out, Red Bull would do the same thing if the roles were switched. Yes, he said, you always try to get your own advantage out of something, and you always try to attract people from other teams. That makes a lot of sense. There are rumours that Ferrari is trying to sign Newey again, and if they can't, they want Wache, who works with Newey. Verstappen says that both of these people are part of F1. Something like that happens all the time, especially if you do it well, he said. Of course, we now also have our own engine programme, and for that, we also bring people in from other teams. That is, and always will be a thing in Formula One. It is also not something that makes me think, oh shit, what is happening here? No, it is actually very standard in Formula One. The current world champion said he had talked to some of the people involved in the rumors, joking, absolutely. Then I say, you have to stay, and I know where you live, ha ha. The current world champion says he isn't directly working on the new car's design, but he does help in other ways, like when he's driving the RB20. I just give my input, of course, on what I think could be even better about the old car. And they then naturally go and work in that new car to put that in, of course. Verstappen said that he didn't care how many races he won to become world champion, as long as he had the biggest prize at the end of the season. Verstappen is at least hopeful for next season. 
It is going well right now at the first test days. The feeling and the balance is right away, he said. Pre-season testing has shown that Red Bull is once again the team to beat. On the first day of running, Max Verstappen set the fastest times. But even though Sergio Perez came in second place on Thursday, he said that the teams are closer than everyone thinks. A brake duct caught fire during Perez's day, which cut it short, but he still managed to do 129 laps at the Bahrain circuit. Even as he spoke, many people thought Red Bull would win again. For example, McLaren's boss Andrea Stella said their team had made big steps since the RB19. But Perez wasn't as easily persuaded. He said the competition would be tougher. I believe that things are a lot closer than we are thinking, definitely, he said. I don't really think that we've had much of a look at our rivals in that regard. At the moment, we're basically focused on our job. We've been so busy with our program. I think tomorrow there will be a bit more of an idea, but I think we will find out next Sunday, after the Bahrain Grand Prix. When asked about the RB20, Perez said it was a step forward, but he wasn't surprised because of what the team had already done. Generally speaking, it's definitely a step forward in the right direction with the car, he said. It's obviously a very tricky track, with the morning to the afternoon, dialing in some setup and getting to understand some setup compound. It's very tricky because the track is changing pretty much every outing, so you have to base everything pretty much on your feeling. Obviously, we had a very dominant car last year. I think we all expected to carry on with a similar concept, but Red Bull always surprise us, and the people back at the factory are really brave and they've done a great job. Red Bull Racing's race engineer, Giampiero Lambiase, talks about why Sergio Perez was also in charge of the second session on the second day of testing. A red flag meant that the morning session had to end early because of a piece of curbstone drain on the track. It was another solid day's mileage for the team. The red flag this morning led us to changing the driver swap we had planned for post-lunch, as it would have otherwise unfairly limited Checo's early impression of the RB20. Red Bull's RB20 was even on fire for a short time during Perez's lap in the first session. It took some work to fix the brake problems that the Austrian team was having. The Mexican wasn't able to finish the desired number of laps, in part because of this accident. We are accumulating mileage at a good rate, which is positive for reliability and system sign-off, the race engineer continued. And beyond that, Checo was able to continue to evolve the setup to his liking having taken Max's baseline from day one. We have plenty to analyse overnight ahead of what is an important final day of testing. What did you think about the pre-season tests? Can you see any of the other teams going up against Red Bull soon? Max seemed to be on a different planet. He was just doing his job and setting a crazy fast lap time when he had to. Was there anyone else who could do that? Let us know what you think in the comments down below.